Hello everybody, welcome back. Carl again. Today I'm going to start a video series on how I built my uh, do-it-yourself Arduino Aquarium controller. Uh, this has been a work in progress for about, oh, I'd say 14 months, so just over a year. And I'm going to kind of show you through the progressions. Um, I'm going to kind of walk you backwards, I guess, um, because I feel that really most people, what they care about is the code so they can see what I did and then kind of take those pieces of the code and learn from it. So today I'm going to show you pieces of the system, what it controls, what it does, put the code up so you guys can look at the code. And then um, as I go through, I'll kind of talk about different things and challenges that I had. So this is my 90 gallon um, reef aquarium. I say reef, I only got a couple pieces of coral, but it's a work in progress here. So I'm going to show you the display for my uh, Aquarium controller, and we'll go from there. Um, I kind of nicknamed it uh, Rex Aquarium Controller or RAC. It's been through originally when I started this project, it had an Arduino Uno, and then it went to an Arduino Mega, then it went back to the Arduino Uno. Um, it stayed with the Uno for about a year, um, and then I recently just took it back to the Mega because I ran out of space for my sketches. So my sketch is about 36. K and of course the Uno can only hold I don't know I guess 30 K something like that and um, the other part of the problem with the Uno was um, I just recently added the Ethernet shield and the Ethernet shield on the Uno uses pins uh, 10 11 and 12 and I didn't have any room left for pins so I'm also using a couple port expanders the MCP 23008 port expanders and I'll talk about those my plans are is to get this working on the Arduino UN because with the UN it is um, wireless so I don't have to have an Ethernet shield anymore and the other part of that is, is the UN and the Leonardo don't use uh, digital pens for the Ethernet shield they actually use different pens so I gotta kinda get the sketch a little smaller to fit on the UN I can only get 28 and a half K on the UN because the Leonardo bootloader takes a little bit more um, flash memory space up so uh, once I kinda now that I have this mega program really worked I can kinda tweak down um, what I need what I don't need and get rid of some of the excess waste and hopefully I can fit it on the unit so anyhow without further ado let's move forward okay so I went ahead and moved the controller over to the side here so I can get you a good shot at it so this is the top screen it's a 20 by 4 LCD it shows the tank temperature at the top the pH the sump temperature the current time, uh, the canopy temperature, whether or not the canopy fan is on or off. Uh, the bottom line is blank for now, and I don't have anything to put there yet. And then the bottom right line lets me know that the water levels and everything is good. That means the return pump is running, you know, the water level is where it's supposed to be, and there's nothing I need to know about immediately. Uh, the second LCD screen is another 20 by 4 you can see that this top left screen that basically tells me whatever remote function I push so I have a remote that I can use you can see at the top there's an IR receiver and when I push the button for example I turn the LCD light on it tells me LCD it tells me the sump light status the last time on the left the uh, auto top off ran how many times the auto top off is run it does not record the EEPROM so every time I reset it that number will reset the heater status um, the fresh water reservoir status, the sump level status, the height of the water level, whether or not the cooling fan is off for the system. The middle is if it gets too hot, it'll turn the tank light off. I have four um, T5s, so it'll turn those off if it gets too hot. And then the current res re revision, I am on ACM number four, and that's just aquarium computer mega and then number four. Every time I change kind of something really significant in the code, I change the number. So if I need to go back, it's not such a big deal. So I have this just in a Radio Shack enclosure. Um, one thing I did for these, so you're probably thinking, wow, you got two LCDs. I'm actually using the um, Adafruit uh, RGB LCD backlight display, or not backlight, um, Okay, so I'm actually, to get two LCDs on the system, I'm actually using um, Adafruit's um, I2C SPI backpack. And that uses the MCP23008 chip, the port expander. Um, that's in my code. So there's actually two of those chips inside of that housing that's running those codes, all on I2C. 
I have it connected me a blue Ethernet cord just so I can disconnect it. You can see over here I have a connection so I can disconnect it. Also in there, what you can't see is a buzzer. So if something's really wrong, it'll give me like a little buzz and let me know, uh-oh, something's wrong. And then, again, the IR sensor. All right, so that's going to take care of the control. Let's run down to some of the hardware. Uh, just another note about the uh, aquarium controller and kind of the history behind it. Um, originally, I started with the uh, Uno, and I added two LCDs so I could kind of see everything that I wanted. And I've already showed you what the LCD displays. Now that I have the Exively working, and I can actually see data and it graphs data for me, I'm almost convinced I can cut one of those LCDs out and just have kind of like current information. You know, for example, tank, sump, canopy temperature, along with my pH, and then maybe like sump light and heater status. I don't really need anything else because Exively will tell me all of that. So I think as I kind of progress forward and try to move back away from the Mega and use the Arduino Loon, I can actually drop one of those LCDs and have just the top LCD and go that route. I'm still going to keep the remote sensor at this point. It doesn't use a lot of code space um, and see if I can't make that work. I really like the remote. It's kind of a cool little feature. And um, let me show you here. Uh, this is the remote I have. It's just an old Apex 2 TV remote that I've had laying around. And I can do so much stuff with this um, through the code. And if I hit different buttons, it tells me what each button does. I can turn the tank light on and off, the skimmer, the return pump. Um, I can run the ATO. I, I have a feed mode. I have a water change mode. All these different features just with the push of a button. And it's so simple just to go in there and hit that. So the... Um, other thing I'm kind of working on is I have in the Samson S4, which has an IR blaster in it or, or infrared um, transceiver in it. And so I'd like to see if I can't make a remote control app for my phone where basically I just mimic the buttons of this Apex remote, tells the Arduino, hey, to do this. And that might be kind of cool, too. So anyhow, okay, so starting at the top of the tank here, like I said, I do have an Odyssey T5 fixture. I actually have modified ballast. I put normal T5 ballast in there. I took the Odyssey ballasts out. Everybody seems to have a problem with those ballasts. And um, I had the T5 ballast sitting around, so what the heck, I put them in there. Um, I have a temperature sensor up there, which is a TMP36. So what happens is when the temperature in the canopy gets too hot, predetermined by me, the Arduino then switches on that 12 volt fan and it'll actually air in from the side vents here. So I don't know if you can tell, but the tank is actually in the corner of uh, my basement here, so there's a good void back there. And I actually have a return vent down at the bottom that sucks in air into the furnace. So in the summertime here, it actually blows the hot air out and then it can be sucked into the furnace to cool. So it's kind of like a, you know, I guess an easy chiller. Um, in the back there, that white wire, which actually runs down to a um, it's a big pin housing that I stuck a TMP36 in. What I actually did was took the, the wire to TMP36 up, and then I kind of forced silicone into the pin housing, and that makes it waterproof. And I've had that pin for about a year, a pin, the pin top now for about a year, and that sensor has not failed. Originally, I used just heat shrink tubing like that, and that actually did fail. It actually leaked and corroded the connections. Okay, let's move on to the stand and take a look at that. So you'll notice as soon as I open the door I have some LED lights. That's on this um, switch here. I have a float switch back there in the corner. That is what I call a low water float. So it'll shut the return pump off. That's the blue pump. That's the main return pump. So that controls that. Um, over here I have that float on the left. That's called a low float. That's what controls my auto top off. And then uh, next to that, you can see the float there straight down. That is a high float. So when the water gets that high, it'll turn the skimmer off because the skimmer will go crazy. Uh, over here is my, <laughs> this is a 20 gallon long sump that I made. So I have the inlet here, protein skimmer, um, return with the bubble trap. 
And then I have another tank which I use for my refugium, which has my chato in it. Um, I did block off that small section right there, and that is for my freshwater auto top off. You can see there's a little pump down there, and then there's also a float switch, and that lets me know when my fresh water gets low. Um, you see there's a blue pen, that is for my uh, pH pen, and that's just one of the really cheap and expensive, you know, $9 pH pens. Uh, if you're going to buy one, I wouldn't get that one. I've had it's just a pain in the butt to try to calibrate it and to try to keep it calibrated, and I would not recommend one of those. So uh, quickly the water comes down from the overflow, it tees off, you can see there is the sump light, just a, special, a simple 100 watt coil bulb, and then it branches off, goes down into my DIY filter sock holder, and then you can see there is the return through a union, up through that nylon flex hose, and then out back into the tank. A um, couple notes um, about this. I originally thought that I liked the two sump ideas, uh, now not so much. I think eventually what I'm going to do is just get one long sump and divide it into the refugium return and skimmer section and then I do really like this auto top off feature. It's super easy to add water to it. It's easy to see. Clean and simple. Um, I dose uh, calc washer so cleaning that kind of that residue out is super simple and I really do like that. Um, I do have a GFL reactor and that little pump for the GFL reactor is not controlled by the uh, Arduino. Uh, there is the set of fans, two 12 volt fans that I use for cooling. And yeah, that pretty much takes care of that. So let's now move on to all the electronics and plugs and all. Okay, so this is the electronics section. And what I did when I built my stand, I kind of put this wall, this white stuff back here is actually a wall, let me turn that light off, is actually a wall and that keeps the kind of the water out. And um, I have two plugs that I installed. They go to a uh, flexible cord that I put a plug on and actually plugs into my battery backup. So that's how I give all the power to the system. So let's start down here at the bottom and work our way up. So the wires are kind of a mess and I've seen some really pretty wires where people spend lots and lots of time zip tying. Unfortunately, that's why I kind of made this cabinet, just so I could put the door on it and forget about it. Um, at the bottom is the Arduino Mega. Um, on top of that, uh, what you cannot see is just a simple um, shield that I have a uh, DS1307 real-time clock. Nothing super special about that. Above that is the Ethernet shield. And then uh, on top of that is that white wing shield that has all the screw connections. And then on the very, very top is my DIY pH shield. Okay, so the, the pH shield I actually model off of the Practical Maker. Um, that's his website, practicalmaker.com. And he actually originally designed this board, and he was selling them for a while. He's got, a, I think, a redesigned newer model. What I did was I took the design and kind of modified it. One, to make it single-sided. Um, I think there's two jumper wires on there now. I put a uh, jumper on the LEDs to turn those LEDs on and off. That's the red and green there. And then I also put jumpers on so I can select which analog input I would like to use. This box over here is a, another port expander chip and that has all my float switches. And the only thing that's in there is the port expander uses I2C. So there is... Um, Actually, this um, telephone wire in the back here, this telephone wire in the back actually it comes from that box and has two USB inputs. And the only thing I did the USB inputs for was so I could plug in the float switches. So the two USB cords run out to the tank, which I showed you earlier, and connect to all those float switches and also connect to the door cabinet switch. And that's what actually turns the light on and off. So I have, you know, LEDs mounted up there. Um, white additional telephone line that is actually for my temperature sensor for the canopy again I added that after the fact because originally I didn't have such a big canopy and my old canopy I had on my 55 gallon was vented so I didn't need any kind of active cooling then you'll see there's three serial cable connections um, one serial cable connection is for the temperature probes for the tank and the sump um, that's the black one in the back right the one in the front controls this blue um, relay box which I showed a video on how to make 
and then the one on the left controls this red relay box. Now the red and the blue are exactly like the difference is the blue uses mechanical relays and the red uses solid state relays. So there's the uh, audio connector cable here is actually for my fan. So my power supply I have is actually a 5 volt and a 12 volt power supply which sits behind this wall in my workshop and it gives 5 volts for the Arduino and then it gives 12 volts for my fan. So I bring 12 volts in. Um, I did a completely different connector because a, my 5 volt input is here and I didn't want to use 5 and 12 volt inputs as the same so I don't mess them up. Uh, red buttons, reset button. So anyhow I bring 5 volts in on one of these plugs and then I bring um, the signal out to the fan. So I actually use a um, I don't use a PWM pen at this point. Right now I just have a MOSFET that's controlled. The MOSFET is actually on the real-time clock board and the MOSFET just controls uh, on and off. So I, I write the MOSFET um, high or low and that will uh, allow the ground to connect and actually turn that fan in. Um, and then the green wire there is the Ethernet as you can see. And then kind of get a shoe a shot of the Mega. Um, in the blue box, I have a relay for my light, my tank light. I have a relay for my return pump, and I have a relay for my skimmer. Um, over here, I have my sump relay, which actually uses a Crydom uh, SSR. Um, with the compact fluorescent balls, they put such a light load on them that they won't always turn on, so it kind of flickered. Uh, this is a 12 volt transformer plug. So this is just a solid state relay that controls um, the cabinet lights here when I open the door. Um, this plug is the heater and I actually left two just in case I needed another heater. Originally I had a 55 gallon, now I have a 90. So if I need to add an additional heater for uh, heating capacity in the winter, I have a spot to plug it in. Uh, this is an auto top off that just connects to that little plug. This black box that you see is just a kind of extension cable. Um, you can see the plug on the auto top off is really long and I couldn't get the door to shut. So I just kind of modded this together. I had this little short cable and I had one of these little cheap um, plugs and I just kind of threw the box together and away we went. And then lastly is this plug. This is 12 volts as well and that runs the cooling fans. Now I know what you're thinking. Well you said you had 12 volts for the cooling fan up top. Why don't you just run the 12 volts for those other items. Originally when I designed this I didn't have that 12 volt in. I just had a 5 volt wall, wall wart that I plugged into this port and powered the Arduino. Now that I have a dual power supply, I just haven't modified or added an additional MOSFET to run the 12 volt stuff um, and get rid of these plugs. And I don't really need any more plug space at this point, so there's nothing calling my name for, hey, you need this plug, you need this plug. So eventually what I'll do is, is I will put those two cooling fans that sit on the sump and I'll actually run them just like I did this with two of these connectors or really only need one more off of that MOSFET and turn them on and off and that will give me another solid state plug back. Uh, some of these other connections like here and here just tie all of these little LED strips together that light the canopy. Um, if you're having issues with your mechanical relays when you energize or de-energize them with resetting the Arduino add MOVs to all the plugs. Ran MOVs to all three of the uh, plugs, the hot and neutral side on each one of those three and that seemed to take the problem away. So hopefully if you're having problems with that, that is the fix. Okay well thanks for watching uh, part one of my Arduino aquarium controller. Um, if you have any specific questions ask them down below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Again I'm going to kind of go through each one of the steps um, in this process a little bit at a time. I think my next video will be kind of um, talking about how I got exactly talking to Arduino. Um, and, you know, I said this in a couple other videos. That was really a challenge. And, you know, if you really think about commercial grade products, the Reef Keeper and the, the Neptune or Apex, they have the ability to, you know, log the data and you can log in and look at them. Well, I can do all that with my system now as well. The only thing that I cannot do is talk from the outside world or the internet. So if I'm at work, I can't turn a light on or off or turn, or turn a fan on and off. I don't have that ability yet. Um, there is some process code or some example code that talks about being able to send the data back into Arduino. So hopefully I can kind of get that working. 
Again, right now my next big challenge is to try to get the Arduino Oom back into this and get the Mega out of there and get the Ethernet shield out of there because I really think that's so cool being able to upload sketches wirelessly. You know, if I make a revision change or something, it's super simple. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Again, if you like it, hit that like button down at the bottom. Leave me a comment. Let me know that you liked it. If there's something you didn't like, say, hey, Carl, I didn't like this. That way I know which way to take these videos.